everybody, no guest Nico here. Welcome to the channel. And as promised, we're going to dive into this DIY solar tracking system. Now I've got my first part in the mail. This is the actuator. I'm going to open this up. Don't mind this stuff. This is going to be my testing apparatus, but we're going to go ahead and open up the package and uh, see what this looks like. And then we're going to go and do a series of tests. And right now I'm determining the feasibility of doing this. So mounting hardware. So it's got a couple pins, a couple brackets, and it looks like it's got some cotter pins that go into those pins that hold them in place. That's all that's in the box. This feels Pretty well wrapped. I will give them credit for that. Uh, you can't tell I'm currently traveling, so I'm doing this from a hotel room. I didn't bring a box cutter, so I'm using this steel ruler, which actually does a very good job at cutting this tape. As you can see. So if you can't find a box cutter and you got one of these six inch steel rules, they work well. Boy, they package this very well. Now I did buy this from Amazon and uh put a link in the description. And uh here's a cylinder, the actuating cylinder. I can't pull it out right now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to run tests on it. Here are your two leads that will run it in and out. And what I have here and my little helping hand, um, I'm using this guy because once I connect a battery to this, this is going to go to 12 volts and I don't want these to touch. I don't want to short out my battery or short out the converter. And so when I'm doing my testing, I don't want to have an issue. So I'm using my little helping hand. I love having this guy. Um, you can buy these anywhere. I think I got this one at Home Depot, but it's great. If you're ever doing any soldering, you can hold things together, solder it, pull it apart. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about this. So I'm going to move the camera so we can get a better view of what I'm doing here on the table. And then uh, we're going to get started with our function test. Okay, here we go. We're going to check the functionality on this thing. And I'm going to utilize my little helping hands here. Because once I have a battery connected to this, I don't want these wires to touch. You know, short out right now. There's obviously nothing here. Um, but I do want to show you real quick voltage here. On this battery, you can see 20.4 volts. Now I'm going to connect the battery to this little adapter. It's going through my DC converter, and let's check our voltage here. Looks like 12.2 volts. So now I have enough voltage to run this actuator. Now this should, when you reverse polarity, bring these closer together, that way I don't have to strip more wire apart, should run this out, switch polarity, run it back. So let's do a function check. Uh, I don't know which way is which to get it to go, so I'm just going to touch these and see if it runs. You can see the speed is kind of slow. But I'm tilting solar panels. It takes hours for it to go from one side to the other. Now I'm going to flip polarity and run it again. It's drawing it back in. So in order to run this, 
you need to be able to switch polarity positive, negative, negative, positive. And then this little actuator motor will spin and draw that cylinder in. So function test one complete. I like it. So I'm going to change over. And one thing I want to do is I don't know how much watts is required to run this. So I'm going to get another setup and we're going to test that out. Okay, so now in order for me to measure the wattage, the easiest way for me to do it was I have this car socket adapter and then I have my Jackery unit. Uh, this Jackery will actually display output wattage. So I'm going to plug this in, turn the 12 volt on. Same thing, I have this on my helping hands and I'm going to have to switch this up so I can let me turn this off. I don't want to short anything out. I just noticed that my, uh, they were a little far apart from each other. So Let's do that. Let's do that. There we go. That way I can actually touch this better. So turn the power back on. So now I should have power to this. Now let's go ahead and run this and I'm going to watch how many watts this thing actually takes. Must be the other way. Must be fully retracted. Turn my display back on there. Come on. Ten watts of power. All I need is ten watts of power to run this thing out. I'm not doing a very good job of staying connected here. It's jumping between 9 and 10 watts. And reverse it the other way. Put that light back on there. 7 to 8 watts. So maximum 10 watts of power to run this thing. I'll move the camera so you can actually see this a little better. So let me explain to you what's going to happen next on this project. So what I need to do is set up a system. So first, I'm going to show you in whiteboard how this is going to work. So say we have our beautiful sun up here in the sky. I'm not going to color the whole thing in, but you get the idea. And it's just casting its beautiful sunshine down. I'm going to want my solar panel perpendicular to the sun, right? So this is be optimal and I'm going to get 100% of my efficiency that the panel is going to put out. Problem I have is as the sun sets or the sun rises, I'm not at an optimal angle. I'm going to be not as efficient. So what I need to do is this needs to rotate with the sun. So I need to have a pivot point here. So this will rotate. Now part of the pivot point will be, uh, I will have some type of mounting apparatus to the pivot point. And then I'm going to attach that cylinder I just demoed here and here. And that will provide the push-pull. I'm going to have to play around because based on the stroke and where I want to have it. But I'm going to build a prototype first. So now how do I get this? cylinder to work. Well, I'm going to attach a 60 watt panel here and a 60 watt panel here. Why 60 watt? Well, I need 10 watts to move this thing. And a 60 watt panel, even with partial sunlight, should get me 10 watts. We're only talking 30% efficiency or less. So, which is less than 30%. Way less. 
So I can get 10 watts out of a 60 watt panel, even if this isn't in the optimal position. So how is this gonna work? So if I have panel one, panel two, this being panel one, this being panel two, you're gonna have positive lead coming out of both, and you're gonna have a negative lead coming out of both. So that's how all solar panels I have, they have a positive and negative. And then my cylinder, so let's just put my a little cylinder here, and my motor there. And this also has a positive and a negative. Now, to get these to where one's not outputting power and the other one is, uh, what you want to do is you want to attach these in series, not parallel. Now what that does is uh, a couple of things. Now I'm going to add a device here in here it's basically a diode it's not going to provide it's not going to allow any energy to go back this way so from here i'm just going to connect my leads oops make that the right color that's what i used to see now the only thing that matters here on which wire i attach from the cylinder is when this is offset from the sun that it actually moves the right direction. And if I connect it to where it moves the wrong direction, I just flip the wires and it'll be fine. So the thought here is this should be a net zero. So this panel, let's say is putting out 15 watts. This panel is putting out 15 watts. You're not gonna get anything into this cylinder. but. Once the sun moves over here, this panel could be putting out 50 watts, and this is zero. Well, as soon as this thing hits 10 watts or so, it's going to move. It's going to take off. And I'm going to build a prototype with one panel. I'm going to put it out in the sun, and we're going to test this. And I'll actually take it and physically move it, and then watch it adjust and follow the sun. So that's coming up. That's the next step. I'm going to build the prototype to where you're going to see this in action. So don't forget to subscribe so you can check it out and see this thing operate. The best part about this is the power generated to run the cylinder comes from the panels. I don't need a battery. I don't need an external power source. It is self-sufficient and it will run itself. That's the goal. So let's see if it works. What do you think? Uh, I think the bench test went well. This thing moves. I know how much power this requires to move it, which is not a lot, 10 watts or less. So I'm going to move on to the next step, which is the build a prototype to get this thing to work. Now, I don't know if I'm actually going to put a solar panel in there or just put the two at 45 degrees with this on a mechanism to rotate it just to show proof of concept that it's going to work. I haven't figured that out yet, but I will. Um, but anyway, I am super excited, super, super excited that... Uh, based, on, based on what I've seen here, this should work without any issue. And I'm going to put a parts list together and how much I spent. This is a fairly inexpensive cylinder uh, actuator. Actually, I should call it the right name. It's a very inexpensive actuator. And it's, the cost is going to be super low on being able to do this. And the output I'm going to get from my solar panels will pay for this investment within a few months probably uh, with the increased efficiencies that I'm going to be putting out of my panel. So uh, I am moving up to, I now have 1100 watts worth of panel. I want to go to 1200 watts. So I'm going to have a 1.2 kilowatt system. Eventually I want to go to a 2.4 kilowatt system. 
that's coming down. So don't forget to subscribe, click that notification bell, watch me finish this project and also watch me grow that solar system so you guys can see how I do it and maybe get some tips and maybe offer some discussions in the chat. So drop your comments below, let me know what you think and I'll talk to you soon. God bless and let's get this done.